Typically, when you create objects, they are placed on the current layer. However, dimensions created using the dim command are automatically placed on the layer you specify. For example, on the home ribbon, in the layers panel, note that layer 0 is the current layer. When you expand the layer dropdown, you can see that the drawing already includes layers called Dimension-1 and Dimension-2. Someone else already created these layers and assigned their properties. Switch to the Annotate ribbon and look in the Dimensions panel. In the Dimension Style dropdown, you can see that the program is currently set to create new dimensions using the Annotative Dimension Style. You could expand this dropdown and choose a different dimension style or create a new style. The Dim Layer Override control enables you to specify the layer on which dimensions will be created. This value is set to Use Current which means that dimensions created using the dim command will be created on the current layer, which happens to be layer 0. Expand the dim layer override dropdown and choose the dimension-1 layer. That way, any new dimensions you place will be created on the layer you specify rather than on the current layer. Now you are ready to create a dimension. On the annotate ribbon, in the Dimensions panel, click the Dimension tool. The program prompts you to select an object or specify the first extension line origin, and you can see that there are also a number of options. But in many situations, you do not need to choose an option. For example, in the exercise file, hover the cursor over the horizontal line at the bottom of the object. When you do, you see a preview of a linear dimension, and the prompt now states to select the line to specify the extension line origin. Click to select the line. The program then prompts you to specify the dimension line location, and you see a preview of the dimension. Simply click to place the dimension. A linear dimension is immediately added to the drawing. Note that the dimension was created on the layer specified in the Dim Layer Override dropdown, which is the Dimension-1 layer. The command remains active, so you can place another dimension. On the ribbon, expand the Dim Layer Override dropdown and choose the Dimension-2 layer. Then, move the cursor over the diagonal line. You immediately see a preview of an aligned dimension. Click to select the diagonal line and then click to place the dimension. Again, the dimension is created on the specified layer, but since you changed the layer in the dropdown, the aligned dimension has been placed on the Dimension-2 layer. In the command line, you can see that the program is still prompting you to select objects, and there are a number of options. One of those options is Layer. Remember that any time you see options, you can choose an option by using dynamic input, by typing, by selecting it in the command line, or by right-clicking and choosing from a shortcut menu. Right-click and choose Layer. The program prompts you to enter a layer name or select an object to specify the layer on which you want to place dimensions, or you can type a period to choose the current layer. Click to select the horizontal dimension you previously placed. As soon as you do, in the ribbon you can see that the layer in the Dim Layer Override dropdown has changed to the Dimension 1 layer. In the command line, that layer now displays inside angle brackets. Press Enter to accept that layer as the new dimension layer. Hover the cursor over the arc in the upper left until it highlights and the prompt changes. Then, click to select the arc, and then click again to place a radial dimension. That dimension has been placed on the Dimension-1 layer. Suppose an appropriate dimension layer did not already exist. In that case, you can quickly create one and apply it to the dim command even while the command is active. Right-click and choose the layer option again. This time, when the program prompts you to enter a layer name or select an object, type My Dimensions. 
and then press enter. The layer name you entered now appears on the ribbon in the dim layer override dropdown and at the command line inside angle brackets. Press enter to accept that layer as the new dimension layer. Hover the cursor over the circle until it highlights and the prompt changes. If the program does not automatically indicate that it is about to create a diameter dimension, choose the diameter option. Then click to select the circle and then click again to place the dimension. This time the dimension is created on the new My Dimensions layer that you created on the fly. When you create a new layer in this way, the layer takes on the same layer properties for color, line type, line weight, and so on as the current layer. So the new diameter dimension was created with a thick line weight. Press Enter or Escape to end the command. Then switch to the Home ribbon and open the Layer Properties Manager. You can see that the My Dimensions layer is the same color and has the same 0.3 millimeter line weight as layer 0, the current layer. Click in the line weight field for the My Dimensions layer to open the line weight dialog. Change the line weight to default and then click OK. Then close the Layer Properties Manager. Since you changed the line weight assigned to the My Dimensions layer, the diameter dimension no longer has a thick line weight. On the Home ribbon, expand the layer dropdown and note that the drawing also now includes one additional layer called Def Points. Whenever you add an associative dimension, the program automatically creates definition points and places them on this layer. Definition points are invisible nodes located at the end of an extension line corresponding to the location of the object being dimensioned. The Def Points layer is never printed or plotted, and once created, you cannot remove this layer.